Today on Tested 4x4, we're gonna take a look at a truck that is gonna be a guaranteed classic the minute that you buy it. And that is the square body Chevrolet pickup truck. And in my opinion, there's no better version than that square body than a three quarter ton four wheel drive with a short bed conversion. Starting in 1973 and for 18 years, General Motors produced the CK series pickups. And this K20 is a great example of a square body. It's kind of ironic that this generation of trucks is called square bodies, considering that internally, General Motors named this body style the rounded line truck. Model designations for the square body Chevrolets were always a combination of letters and numbers. So a C truck meant that it was two wheel drive, while a K truck meant it was four wheel drive. And then the numbers that followed that determined the vehicle weight. So a half ton was a 10, three quarter ton was a 20, and a one ton was a 30. So a two wheel drive, half ton square body pickup truck would often be simply referred to as a C10. This particular truck is a 1979 K20, three quarter ton, four wheel drive. The square bodies were available with many different engine options, from an inline six, a V6, multiple V8s from five liters, all the way up to 7.4 liters. There was an Oldsmobile 350 cubic inch diesel, and that was eventually replaced by the 6.2 Detroit diesel. The square bodies are also the generation of trucks that made the transition from carbureted to first generation throttle body EFI. This pickup has a 350 cubic inch small block under the hood with a four barrel quadrajet carburetor with the top of the air cleaner inverted for absolutely no reason at all. What I like best about driving an old school square body Chevrolet pickup truck is it for me it's the nostalgia i mean i remember when these trucks were brand new sitting on the lot when i started as a mechanic i cut my teeth on a lot of square body chevrolets they really weren't that popular until recently when they kind of took off and now they're the hot ticket that everybody wants and i understand why they're just a cool old truck i absolutely love the trucks especially this one right here this to me is like the perfect square body i mean three quarter ton, short bed, four speed stick. I mean, you're not gonna be racing it down the road, but it really is a great truck. Transmission options for the K series truck. Well, there was a bunch of them. You get two different three speed automatics, a turbo 350 or a turbo 400. Later vehicles, you could get the four speed automatic being the 700 R4. For manual transmissions, there was also a few options there. You could get a three-speed Saginaw, a four-speed new process, or if you were lucky, you got the transmission that's in this truck, and that is an SM465. There are multiple transfer case options in the K-Series trucks, starting with the new process 203, which included a gear reduction housing on the front half of the case and a chain to drive the front and rear axles. The case worked as a full-time four-wheel drive transfer case. In 1981, the NP208, an aluminum shift on the fly transfer case became available. This case was smaller and used a planetary gear set to achieve the low range ratio. This particular truck is equipped with one of the most sought after transfer cases. It's honestly one of the strongest cases that was ever installed by an OEM in a full-size pickup truck, and that is the NP205. It's an all gear, cast iron transfer case with a 1.9 to 1 low range ratio and the ability to have a PTO or power takeoff added to the side of it. This transfer case is so good that as a matter of fact, in this generation of pickup truck, every OEM supplier installed it. That means you could get it in a Ford, a Chevy, a GMC, or even a Dodge. With all the different models of square bodies, there were a lot of different axles that were available in the trucks. The majority of them either had a 10 bolt or a Dana 44 in the front in either a six or eight lug configuration. Now out back, there were tons of options. There was 12 bolts or 10 bolts. 
It was actually a semi-float 10 and a half, which was commonly referred to as a semi-float 14 bolt. There was a full float 14 bolt and even a Dana 70 available in the back of the truck. Now, a few of the one ton K30 square bodies did come with a Dana 60 axle up front, but it's pretty common to find them like this truck is right here. It's got a full float 14 bolt in the back. It's got the Dana 44 up front with the eight lug wheels. Now, the owner of this truck is planning an axle upgrade for the front. He's looking for a Dana 60 out of the military version of the square body. It's a CU-CV pickup truck, often just referred to as the Cut V, because that axle is an easy bolt-in upgrade for the front of this truck. All K-Series trucks of the square body generation had the same suspension on all four corners. Multi-pack leaf springs with load leaves in the rear to assist in towing, and a single shock absorber on each corner. The rear shocks were mounted, one on the front and one on the rear of the axle to help control wheel hop. The interior didn't really change a lot over the 18 years that the square body was in production. You gotta remember in 1973, this was pretty plush. I mean, you had multiple seating options available, whether it was benches or buckets. You had a covered dash, which was a change from the previous gener generation, and plastic door cards, and even the option of power windows in some models. But by the time this truck production came to an end in 91, the interior was definitely considered pretty dated. Now from the factory, the square bodies were only available with two different cab configurations. You could have a two-door standard cab or a four-door crew cab. But the bed, there were tons of options because remember, when these trucks were being built, they were still being built as work trucks. So you get a short bed like this, which is six feet long. You get an eight foot long bed, which actually extended the wheelbase of the truck. You get an eight foot bed with dual rear wheels in the back with dual rear wheel fenders. Or you could just simply order the truck as a cab and chassis. No bed on the back at all and you could build it out any way you want it, either as a ranch truck or maybe a welding rig. Now this particular truck did not leave the factory as a short bed. The owner of this truck actually converted it from a long bed to a short bed, which is a popular modification and definitely makes the truck look really cool. There is no question that square bodies are hot right now and you can find a ton of them for sale on the Hemmings Marketplace app in many different configurations all the different cab styles, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, whatever you want. And a lot of them are gonna be modified already. The four-wheel drives will be modified a lot, like this one right here. Just the right amount of modifications to make it a fun daily driver and still function really well off-road. Number of square bodies produced actually is hard to nail down because there were so many different versions of the truck. But believe it or not, a round number that keeps getting thrown around is 10 million trucks over 18 years. That means there's a lot of project vehicles out there if you're looking to find a square body to build for yourself. So even though this truck is considered very desirable right now and a lot of people like building it, don't give up. You'll find the square body of your dreams possibly on the Hemmings Marketplace app.